Well, thank you. Uh, it's weird to hear my voice be so loud and spacious. Uh, I'm really glad that so many people turned out for this weird little talk. Uh, and I hope you all like it because it's the first time I've given this talk, it's the first time I've talked at a conference, so hopefully I don't die. <laughs> uh, so this display is fuzzy, forgive it. Uh, <laughs> The, this is YAML, obviously, because everyone likes YAML, right? So you've got to like me if I show you YAML. <laughs> uh, so my, I'm a senior DevOps engineer at CallCare, uh, which is just a little outsourced call center company. We don't really do anything in the tech sphere. You've probably never heard of us, but that's fine, because I'm not speaking on their behalf. <laughs> uh, so... I'm autistic, as stated, and this is relevant because this talk is a bit of an autistic talk. I'm really excited about something, and I'm trying to get you to be excited about it too, which is very much what I do as an autistic person all day, every day. <laughs> uh, so I'm passionate about a lot of things, but these are the top three most relevant things. Uh, I'm really keen on open source, like the, the ecosystem surrounding it and helping to support that. I'm really keen on computer history. I've got room full of weird little computers from the 80s and 90s, most of which older than me, uh, and diversity in tech, uh, which is really important, I think. Uh, so this talk, first of all, I'm going to go, uh, to go over the idea, which is kind of an idea that's been bobbling my head, and it's a real weird idea that AWS is fun, and people should have more fun with it, and basically I'm an AWS hippie, so... <laughs> uh, so... The, and I'm going to talk about some of my projects, what I've learned, uh, and other projects to inspire you, hopefully. Uh, so, what is AWS to you? It's an important question. Even though it's an AWS conference, this is an important question because it's lots of different things to different people. People see it in different lights. Uh, and for you, it's probably all three, it's all three some of these things. Uh, well, for me, my, the way I see AWS is well different because AWS isn't any of those things to me. Like, day to day, I don't work with AWS. Yes, I know I'm at AWS conference, so I'm an AWS expert. <laughs> but that's not what I do. I actually come from a land next door to the crowd called Data Center Land. Uh, and I work with Kubernetes and Linux and servers I can touch. I work with legacy software and I love it and I pat it on the head and tell it's a nice thing. Or I wear go-up basis. <laughs> uh, so over COVID, I was a Linux system administrator uh, and all I was doing was looking after Linux servers and doing Linux things and generally hanging out with all the Linux system administrators. Uh, so I didn't really, I've never really been someone who's keen on the cutting edge of things, like I really love to dive into the weird historical things and find out about how things used to work and how things work in the weird edge cases. Uh, so why AWS for me is this, it was this thing that was just like cutting edge and I wasn't interested, like, <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but I, I gave it a try over COVID because I was bored and like AWS is as good a thing as any to try over COVID. Uh, and I really found a lot of joy in messing with AWS and just uh, playing with different things and learning about it. And it was this grand adventure and there was no pressure because furlough and basically getting paid for doing nothing. So why not? <laughs> uh, this is how I see AWS. It's kind of alien to me because I started my, my career well recently, and obviously that's a way recent memory, uh, messing around with servers in my bedroom. Like, so to me, the, the physical server, the being able to reach out and touch the servers you work with, 
is kind of normal, so AWS is still kind of weird to me, even though I hang on to AWS community. It's, I also think AWS is incredibly cool. Like, if 20 years ago you'd been like, oh yeah, people walk up to the world's largest retailer and they ask them for a tiny little slice of infrastructure and you give it to them. There's these slices all in different types. There's cheesecakes, there's brownies, this analogy is getting too far. But there is so many different like, things you can get and you just go to Amazon, the world's biggest retailer. Like, it's so weird and cool and amazing. Uh, and also, for me, AWS is a white like waggle. Like, there are so many components, and you put them on top of each other, and they make structures. And that's what really interests me, like the creative aspect of it, how they, they're putting something together to, make, to solve a problem and to just make a solution out of just little components. And this, this concept I invented, that's not me. <laughs> this concept I invented is about that idea, which is why this presentation is block themed. Uh, it's about using the, the way goal that the AWS provides to make projects a spark joy in you. It's about shameless over engineering for the fun of it. It's about doing things that make you happy. And it's about learning through play without all the stress of having to study for a certification. And it, and it could be part of that. Uh, I don't know. I've not done any AWS certificates. For all I know, they require you to run over a bed of nails. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh, it can be whatever you want it to be about. I made the idea up. It's not a particularly solid idea. And this is, this is why I like the idea, and we'll get into this a bit more later. It's, it's a good way to approach learning, I think. Not the only way, but a valuable way that's maybe overworked, because as adults, we get away from the playful side of our nature as we grow up and we forget that how incredibly cool so much of the stuff we work with would be to our younger selves if we could explain it to them. Uh, I really think that it gives this better problem solving, this better perspective on everything. Uh, yeah. So the projects bit, so obviously my, my stack is not informed in any way by anyone's requirements. It's informed by what I want to work with, which is incredibly liberating compared to you or you have to work with whatever your business really needs. Uh, so, you can, so if you're working on your personal projects, you can play with anything. Like the whole toy box is open to you. You don't need to just use whatever's mandated by your business. Uh, so for me, I really, really love this cloud development kit. Like it's so, I started out with AWS Sam and it just didn't gel with me and we had many arguments and I disliked it a lot. Uh, but the cloud development kit just works with the way my brain works. It just makes sense to me in a way that YAML-based configuration just doesn't. Uh, and then serverless. I think serverless is where the bricks analogy works really well because you have to build with it. With, uh, with EC2, you could just use EC2. You don't need to use any other AWS services, almost account, EBS or whatever. But uh, with serverless, you just have to build with it. And I really love like Lambda, how uh, you can just have something on and not have to look after servers. And this is kind of the alien aspect, getting back to that. But the most important and fundamental thing with playing with AWS is the idea. The idea needs to be a little bit silly. That is my premise. Silly ideas have silly fun. Yeah. Uh, so in that way, it's let me reveal to you some of my favorite projects, which make no sense, because that is the point. <laughs> so 
for me, when I started playing with it, I was also at the same time growing as a developer and kind of building that uh, skill set as well. So I started uh, with a single Lambda function that emails forms, and it was way, way janky, <laughs> and it was made by AWS Sam. And this is the foundation of the hateful relationship I have with AWS SAM now. Uh, and I tried to use AWS SAM again to make a weird little quad app. Uh, and SAM still didn't like me, so after that, I completely ignored it. <laughs> uh, so that I set my mind to building an actual website. Uh, and I built some virtual, what I'll talk about later, uh, and this is just a website, which is a bit of a mess. I built a little API, which is getting a little bit more, like, meaningfully well-developed project. Uh, and I then went a sidetrack and built a C-sharp library for no good reason uh, to solve a problem in a project I had invented that didn't really need to be on AWS because it was a way weird little MVC app. Uh, and I made, uh, which is my favorite, uh, a serverless pipeline to make text files turn into audio files and then put a, a video on, uh, so you could upload it to YouTube, basically. <laughs> Uh, so, my favorite projects, the top two are mine, the other two, the other two are ones which I really like and I think are pretty inspirational and <laughs> inspirational uh, and just generally for having fun with it. So, what is this? What is this? What have I done? How is that meant to work? That, why is there a video? All right, technical difficulties. I had to be a first one. Uh, it's compulsory. So forgive the fuzzy text again, but this this is talking more in depth, like the full, the first full like sort of website project I tried to build on. AWS with serverless, uh, and this was me trying to be nice. My mom's got a pony rescue center for like, let's make a website, make a website, got to make a serverless website, it's got to be great, I'm going to do it all on my own. Uh, I was way junior, way junior. <laughs> uh, and this, it was, while we're not good for the intended purpose, it was it was way more an example of playing with AWS, but I tried to turn it into a business project. <laughs> uh, so it was way too over engineered, way too fragile, uh, and weird tech choices. I chose like the most obscure like CS library that came from Wii Free Schools, and that's that's the sort of thing I did during COVID times. Just Weird stuff. Uh, I worked my lesson. I've made them a WordPress website. <laughs> uh, so this this is very much an example of just trying to build and build out a server services, trying to solve a problem uh, in, a, in a weird way, and also try and be a little bit like using what people would actually use in the real world. So just DynamoDB, S3, and API built on Lambda, and ATI Gateway, and authentication on Cognito. Uh, and then I learned, uh, and then I made a silly issue on the CDK project. I didn't understand something. So I learned something about open source and not being a silly person. <laughs> uh, and this was really helpful to me because I got to see how AWS services fit together, how the uh, IAM rules work, and just uh, 
get that better understanding of how it's the high level is. Uh, and I also learned that Cognito is really hard to work with. Or maybe it's just me, but I don't like it anymore. Friendship ended with Cognito. <laughs> Uh, and I also learned that HTML and JavaScript are on their own a kind of hard work at any kind of scale, even the scale this small. So, but I had a lot of fun with it, and I think I learned a lot. Uh, and my fault was just trying to make it into a business thing, which shouldn't have been. Uh, so the audio book generator is a really is a really funny, like quirky project. It's about me wanting audiobooks, didn't want to pay for audiobooks, having already paid for the ebooks. Uh, and I decided I read some AWS poly marketing and all I can think is I got a bit high on the marketing uh, material and I decided to use AWS poly to solve my weird little problem of not wanting to pay for audiobooks. <laughs> uh, and it turns out AWS Poly is great and all, but AWS Poly doesn't know how stories work. <laughs> AWS Poly can't read a book. AWS Poly can give you an announcement. There's a difference. Uh, and I didn't realize that. <laughs> uh, so I run I use the crowd development kit. And that was quite a lot of work because this is a way uh, stitched together kind of what's the point of So it, it started in your world's text to S3 bucket uh, and it will then send it to Poly for processing and then it will, uh, then that audio that gets uploaded to S3 bucket by Poly. Uh, gets uh, turned into a video by a Lambda which calls Fargate to one FMmpeg to encode it into a video with uh, just a single picture. Uh, An idea was I was going to put it as a private window, video on YouTube and basically just get all the audiobooks on YouTube to organise with all my other videos and stuff. Uh, yeah, and that didn't that didn't work, but this had grown so much from the earlier project, and I weren't so much uh, that for me it was more like painting now, rather than going up a really tough mountain. I was really painting and having fun with it, uh, so I like acquired a base level of competency. Uh, I think, yeah, so this was really educational and shows where I was kind of getting at, I guess. Uh, and these, so we've got to transition now to projects that aren't mine, but I wish they were. Uh, so as everyone knows, AWS seems to breed odd databases, which is really weird for a company that started out with a database called SimpleDB. Uh, and not to offend the quantum ledger database person who's speaking afterwards, uh, but quantum ledger databases are kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but none are quite so odd as these two, as these two little projects. Uh, um, they're inspired by something Corey Quint uh, talked about, about root 53 being a database, really, and... Uh, and that's uh, stuck in my mind f from when this actually happened in 2021 until now. So this is how much I like these two ideas. Uh, so DNS, it's kind of a database, it is. I get, I get Corey Quinn's point that it's kind of like you've got text DNS records. They're basically just key value things. Uh, so someone invented a project in Node.js that takes uh, that takes text or JSON and stores it in root 53 uh, <laughs> and basically gives you an interface to query it like a database. Uh, and it's really it's really interesting because this gives the idea of what 
database technology could be, could be like, and it's why, as well as being a completely frivolous and weird project, it's also got these benefits, like the Route 53 is a 100% liability thing, so uh, non-normal database products have that, <laughs> uh, and you've got no data transfer, and you've got way, way fast leads but way slow updates. And I think that's, the, that's one of the best sorts of playful projects. It makes you actually, it's almost a commentary on AWS and where, uh, where we're at with it and like where we could be. Uh, it's a really, really interesting thing. And as well as that, he also made an oral comment and then somebody made a Python library to use the tags in the EC2 instance as a database, which is even more weird. But it's literally one little script file, so it's not, I can't talk about it very much. <laughs> and this, this is my favorite example of playing with enterprise tools, but it predates the cloud. And because this is my talk, I'm counting it as an example of playing with the cloud, okay? So, uh, in, you may have heard of this. It's called the, it was called the Trojan uh, Room Coffee Machine. Uh, and basically, researchers in Cambridge, they had a problem with equitable coffee distribution. There's people at the top of the building, and the coffee machine is at the bottom of the building. So every time a pot of coffee is brewed, the people at the top of the building get no coffee, uh, which is a weird little problem. And they solved it by just making a system to take pictures every three minutes for the local network using the sort of odd protocols they used at that time, uh, which is pretty cool, uh, which is pretty cool, but when you actually think about how long ago 1991 was, I know many of you probably existed at that time, so I'm not calling you old, I'm just calling this old. <laughs> uh, and how, and how limited. So it's quite, it's, it's a really interesting like use of technology. Uh, and they had to wait for the image tag to be created in HTML before they could bring it online uh, and become national news. And it went on to inspire HTTP status code, which is the only project in the world to have inspired our HTTP status code, the I'm a teapot 418. Uh, <laughs> it's part of a little group of interesting, weird little projects which I found in the Wikipedia uh, listing for HTTP status code 418, where I searched it. Uh, and basically monitoring vending machines, and nobody's ever seem to have made projects monitoring vending machines or coffee machines ever since. And Service Expresso doesn't count. It's not about monitoring. It's about produce, production. Make that. Not me, though. Uh, and I'll kind of transitioning to the end of the talk, uh, which may or may not be a bit early. Yeah, it's OK. Uh, so. My thoughts are that silly is a sweetener for learning, as Mary Poppins says, a bit of sugar helps the medicine go down. And exploring, getting out your niche gives context. Maybe if you're more AWS focused, go and buy a cheap server on the internet, have some fun learning about how they actually work these days. Uh, and I think Getting out your niche gives context and like understanding your broad IT industry because there's so much stuff out there uh, that's you know going on and you'll never know it all and it's it's good to explore and I think AWS is good I won't to what but I'm not going to transition to being a crowd architect any time soon. Centers. There's nothing. There's nothing more special than walking down a line of computers and seeing them all singing their own unique songs. Uh, you can't do that with AWS while becoming a criminal. <laughs> uh, 
But I think it's helped me grow a lot, even though these technologies are not directly applicable to what I do every day. They've given me a lot of understanding and, and appreciation. I've kind of been hanging on to the AWS community ever since, pretty much, uh, and just attending your meetups and generally being an imposter. And I, I'm, I've had a bit of a break from working on projects, but I'm working, I'm currently working on the Stupid We Overkill project to help pick a takeaway uh, for a group. So we've got a lunch club at work every Friday. We have a takeaway and take turns paying for it, and nobody has any preferences because they're all adults, and adults lose preferences, apparently. Uh, and also, just playing is good. Like, adults don't need to forget how to play. Uh, you probably won't inspire a HTTP status call, but you probably will have fun. That's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, that is a really fuzzy screen, but you can probably read it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess you can come up now. I'll come back up, yeah. <laughs> um, thank you for that. Round of applause, please. <laughs> Any questions for Anna? Yes, over here. Uh, thank you. Hello. Oh, thank you for the very uh, yeah, refreshing and inspiring talk. Um, yeah, it was very well needed. I just want to ask, particularly in the scope of Silly, um, is there a particular area or, um, or service or something that, is interested, uh, that you're interested in the most at the moment? Uh, I, really, uh, I really like uh, the way DynamoDB works. Like, that's, that's interesting to me because it's not... It's not quite like anything else, like the, the uh, uh, and we well, read an article about it recently, I was quite keen on it. Yeah. Oh, amazing, thank you. Anna, while I've got the mic, what's your least favorite AWS service? Cognito. Great. Cogn I didn't have to think about Easy. that. <laughs> Done. Um, any other questions for Anna? <laughs> yeah. What's the next thing that you're going to do? Have you got something in your head that you're going to play with the cloud with? Uh, yeah, so that's the takeaway picker thing uh, for picking from takeaways for a group and kind of organizing a little takeaway club thingy. Yeah, pretty wage. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions for Anna? No? Well, with that said, can we have one final round of applause for Anna, please?